Welcome to Healings and Meditations with Frank Jordan and the Earth Mind Think Tank Group. We welcome all listeners and chatters. Any questions can be called in to 1-775-657-5973. 1-775-657-5973. If you're in the chat room on Wolf Spirit Radio, which is wolfspiritradio.com forward slash wolf chat, please post questions in uppercase letters, in capital letters. Thank you. Now on with the show. You're listening to Wolf Spirit Radio. Wolf Spirit Radio, you are listening to indeed 16th of March 2014 Healings and Meditations on Wolf Spirit Radio, which indeed is a listener supported station. That means if uh, you don't give us any money, then we don't exist anymore after a while. Uh, we will die out and fade away with starvation. Ah. Oh. Anyway, um, if you can help, you can um, click the donate button on various places uh, uh, and you know where they are and um, hopefully you've done one recently. And if you haven't, um, do join in and uh, look for the... Uh, there's one on Wall Spirit Radio, there's one on everbeyond.info and everbeyondradio.com and uh, uh, you can... You can get uh, subscriptions, indeed, to uh, Wolf Spirit Radio, and you can get to the archives, which is a vast archive. We've been doing these things for years, and now we've got loads and loads and loads of interviews with very interesting people who all have a little piece of the puzzle. Uh, and uh, like I was saying in, in the break there, these, that we've all got a, a, a little uh, wedge that allows us to get under this enormous stone cover and once everybody's tapped their wedge in, other people can tap more wedges in and it eventually lifts up and we're eventually able to see what's under the cover. So, uncovering another piece of the truth, Frank Jordan. Well, good evening, everyone. And for your edification, I used to be an expert in the use of dynamite, amongst other things. So uh, when that wedge gets too flimsy or the weight gets too heavy to cover, let us know and we'll blow it out for you and <laughs> open you up to the light. <laughs> well, maybe maybe that's that's it. You know, the, once you've got the wedge in there and you've made the crack and you've got the crack, you can slip something under, you know, uh, <laughs> and, <laughs> and get something going. So, you know, we, that's how the team works. So that's like the uh, the engineers. Eh? So, Frank, um, that that was part of it. I mean, we were talking about silicone. We, t we were, no, not silicone, solid silicon. Um, and uh, the consciousness of silicon and uh, the Internet and how that's developed. And uh, before that, we were talking about the construction of the atoms and the crystal layers and, and the, the atomic form, which is geometric. Like, uh, you know, scientists talk, oh, there's an electron cloud, but I believe it's more like an electron tetrahedron or an icosahedron or something like that. You see it as a cloud? No, I see it as a, as a form rather than a cloud. Or maybe a cloud uh, shape, a form-shaped cloud. Yeah. Like a Energetically, cloud. within the, the, the cloud, though, it, it can rearrange and create a form uh, as need may be to manifest a form. So, oh, now you got me triggered and thinking about that, and that's not what I wanted to talk about tonight. Oh, you did ask. Um, yeah, okay. Well, I've had an I, 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 Yeah, I'm worthy, you go. <laughs> I, I now I have to put Stephen back, because he wanted to tell you all about that stuff. He loves that. But uh, I found something that intrigued me this week, and, and since this is uh, in our scientific and... and uh, metaphysical uh, set up in the first show that we like to talk about how things work um, I'd like to talk about something that brought to my attention one more time this week and with a kind of a new twist to it and this to me is, is something that is basically not understood by the science particularly because I listened to a tape by Greg Braden this afternoon and and using his scientific terminology and that of others, 
uh, he fairly well described what we do as far as the basic manifestation is concerned and the polarity thing like that, although he didn't use polarity, he just used feeling and um, uh, intent and, th- and things of that nature. But um, in my own reality, where I've had to develop my own nomenclature for things and a system of understanding as things develop, I think it's allowed me to go to a deeper level than, than what I've heard any of them expressing. As I was just listening to another one last week that I mentioned, and they're, they're, they've got the fundamental scientific steps. Um, they're getting that pretty well down pat because they've been studying healers and and the evolved uh, beings of other cultures and whatnot that can do these things. But they're missing a very essential ingredient that to me is absolutely necessary if you want to be a healer and and do energetic healing work. And uh, it goes beyond simply the the male-female polarity. It, it's the, the fact that they do talk about the low self and, and uh, the fact that the heart is the center of, of consciousness that holds the form and things of that nature. But mostly they talk about the consciousness and and uh, using your conscious mind to figure things out and do things. And Braden did talk about the necessity of feeling. And you heard me talk about that too in the past. That feeling is the essence of language, the language of the universe. And feeling is what translates numbers into from an abstract reasoning level of of our our uh, thinkers, our conscientious scientists. Uh, w- without feeling, they they can't really do this stuff they talk about. They say and they bring about all the theories and what's observed in others, but they can't really make it happen. And that's because we as healers who understand this, we do it with feeling and. Once the core understanding, the base understanding of how something works, uh, comes through, usually through experience and practicality of having to figure out what you did that, that worked, you, you always get back to this fundamental of, of feeling. That feeling and, um, emotion go together. Uh, emotion is like one polarity, uh, as Braden calls it, and, uh, you know, I call it. And um, the thought is another polarity. Uh, for, with him, the thought being the, the high side, uh, the, the male side, and the, the female uh, that I observe being the low side, uh, which is uh, he talks about that as being the the energy of form, the um, um, emotion, the emotional side. And they work together to, to create the form. Well, we, that's exactly what we say. But what they're missing is, is the language of making that happen is feeling. And how to use feeling to, to uh, not only interpret things, but to implement things, um, to make things happen. And as, as you're aware, my, the construct that I use to understand things is, always is, when you're working with any kind of energy, things are happening to you, or you're observing it happening to others, or you're trying to figure out how things work. There's this base criteria that I run everything through of five basic things. Of Number one, when you're playing in all these energies, these potentials and constructs, does it do anything, or is it just an illusionary experience in your, that your mind's creating to help entertain you? Or is it being done in others' minds that you're playing in and, and you come up with a joint illusion about something? So that's the first thing. Does it do anything? Is it physical? Is it, is it worth doing, you know? Well, that's a, going down the line. Then the second thing, uh, can you repeat it? Can you make it happen again and again and again when you need it? And particularly in things like healing, which is so elusive anyway, the third thing being, can you repeat it? And if you can repeat it, then that takes you to the fourth thing, is can you teach it to others? 
And if others can do it, then it becomes a standard and a basic law, so to speak, that if you do this and this and this, and energetically, things happen. You can create, manifest, and do things. Then the first thing, the first uh, responsibility of it all is, is it worth doing? Is that thing that you did worth doing? Otherwise, it, if you're just playing mind games and head games um, and nothing's accomplished, it doesn't progress us in the world of learning or to accomplish anything. But anyway, coming back to where I wanted to go and initiate in this program, i talked to, to many healers who understand how clairsentience works, how to, how to feel the system, how to feel the chakras, how to feel the, the energy stored in the chakras, and the fact that they're, they're beginning more and more now to uh, realize that the chakra system is, is just like the hard disk on a computer, where we store files and folders of experiences and, and uh, patterns and forms, and use that as our, our base operating foundation uh, that uh, when we need to do something or, or express something or understand something, we pull the energy of that, that experience, up into our brain from the chakra system, where our frontal lobes take that energy and extrapolate it from the subtle energy field where it exists, uh, the, the brain extrapolates it back into in the frontal lobes into a, a, a working, reasoning, uh, A plus B equals C rational expression that you can understand with our language and in our, with our brains and so uh, that being pretty well understood that is the foundation of how the clearing the way techniques work first of all you, you it's an, it gives you understanding of how to do things and that being that when if you want to clear something out of your hard disk of your computer if you feel it when you put your mind on the subject, the resonance is directly down to where it's stored in your system. And uh, when you feel it there, you can pull it, clear it out, just like dragging it to trash, like on a computer. You can eliminate that thing with desire and will and intent and energy. And so that's really how we can clear our systems of virtually everything that's been programmed into us. And the more you clear, the more capacity you have of, of addressing or accessing more and more levels of your deeper inner consciousness. And uh, most people work pretty well in the upper systems, but it seems like they pretty much totally either don't know it exists or don't know how to deal with it. And, and I'm talking about the low systems, the, the low self. And here we're back again to give you a fuller understanding that the uh, yeah. the indwelling soul, when it comes in, and I'm talking about the mid-soul now, the one that we interact and experience and, and uh, conduct in our life ex- uh, expressions here, uh, that mid-soul is an indweller and it is an alien. It did not originate necessarily on this planet because most souls, when they regain their soul memory, can go way back uh, in their soul flows to uh, to their soul family is what I call it. It's a stream of energy that holds the consciousness of many, many, many similar souls, and and actually we can experience soul splits where. Uh, we can, when you go step back into that, that level, you can visit yourself in many other incarnations doing things or in the past lives where you've been doing things. Yeah. And all that information is, is drawn together and pulled together into the soul stream that goes back to our core consciousness uh, out there in the cosmos somewhere. And in in our little group, our little meditation group, we've had the experience of following that back to uh, to what we call the home planet, and it is quite an experience to, to be able to communicate with beings that do not have physical form as we experience it, but crystalline forms as <clears throat> as energetic forms of consciousness, and uh, it anyway. That's not what I wanted to talk about. Today we'll do that another time. 
what I really want to address is, is when we start going into the low self and doing our clearing work, um, it's not difficult at all for a healer like myself to learn clairsentience to where you can easily drop into someone else and read their chakras is what I call it. And I, as you go down through, you, you feel um, in yourself through resonance what, what is patterned in their systems. And uh, this is only after you you cleared them of exterior entities or maybe indwellers in the high cell so you won't get caught by something unexpectedly. And uh, <clears throat> then when you drop below the... Uh, most people are working in that upper range of consciousness of emotion and thought and uh, that are human ideals. But when you drop down below the heart center... You're dropping into our animal consciousness, and very little is known about that, except that it is the driving force for sexuality. It is the, the consciousness of our our animal that ha, that li- literally rules the body for thousands and thousands of years, hundreds of thousands, as as it evolved into the form to where our high self indwellers <coughs> could. Uh, could come in and indwell and experience being humans in this form. If that hadn't happened, then the low self soul, and it is a soul, it's a lower consciousness, that low soul has, has in humans has a development level of about a four-year-old child, which means that they have intelligence and capacity and creative. They could survive out on the plains very well, and... Uh, could, could experience language and, and thoughts and ideas, but they didn't have this high um, genetic consciousness that was implanted into our form that allows us to the, the soul to indwell and have full access to all the experiential things that we can do with our brain. Yes. But that <clears throat> being what it is, that low self animal is a separate consciousness. It does not think like the high self does. Basically, all it knows is survival of the physical body, and uh, I've discovered in in working with it and uh, actually resonating with the the low cells of, of hundreds of people to, to read what the cause of their physical, mental, emotional problems are. Um, the realization comes that the low self does manage the physical body. And its primary instinctive business is to assure that there's a new um, body coming along for this low soul to reincarnate in further down the family line. So that's why sex becomes such a drive uh, in the early teenage years whenever the the gonads develop and it just becomes imperative that we have sex. And that's driven by the low self-consciousness. And all the curiosity about it, that's the pure animal consciousness. Now, the, the high soul <coughs> indwelling um, does, observes this, and it can experientially enjoy the participation in sex and things like that, but the physicality of it, the sensuality of it, all comes from the low self. But um, it doesn't end there. If you drop down a step lower below the, the sex shock here, you, you get into the really primitive instinctive consciousness of humans. And it goes back <clears throat> through the, our genetic flows back for hundreds and thousands and thousands, hundreds of thousands of years. And it's possible to, to drop into that and follow that consciousness back to where we literally were primates on the plains. And uh, before the 223 genes that were introduced by the Anunnaki prompted our, our high cells to, to develop into the, where the, the, our souls could indwell as indwelling humans. But the curiosity is, in, in, in my own self, I've, I've been curious about where did my soul, high soul, reside before it came here? And uh, everybody likes to recall their their past lives and whatnot, and and it's an educational thing to do. And uh, um, sometimes there's karma coming through of choices that were made in those past lifetimes that are extremely detrimental to you in this lifetime. And so, as lessons to be learned, 
it's good to go back and examine the choices you made in those past lifetimes. And in that state of consciousness, in that time frame, instead of making wrong choice, like murdering somebody or raping them or doing the, the other horrible thing that the low self is capable of doing, you simply choose to not do that. And this is how karma is cleared, is you do not, you make the choice to not do that. I call it making right choice instead of wrong choice. And then you proceed forward in the standing ways. And those standing ways immediately adjust as you come back forward in the time frames again to where that karma does not exist in this lifetime. So when you're fighting karmic issues, that's the way to clear it. That's the simple way. That's acknowledging that you learned the lesson. You don't need to carry it on forward into this lifetime and, and keep on experiencing the same thing again and again and again. And this is this can be can carry down for generations until you learn a lesson and make the right choice to not do it. But anyway, that's deviating off again from what I really wanted to talk about. And that's this low soul, the low soul of the low self. It's an animal consciousness. All it knows is survival. It, it's, it has all the capacity of all the negative things that, that humans can experience in our lifetimes, like greed, avarice, uh, domination, controlling, killing, um, raping, pillaging, um, sensuality of all of the forms possible, um, accumulating more than your need for survival purposes. Everything that acts out in our, our higher society out here that are, is a, of a negative, controlling, dominating uh, uh, nature rises from the low self and becomes a pattern in the upper self that this is the way life is and this is the way to survive. But at a point in time, the human consciousness is going to make a shift. They're going to realize that the low self is a dominator, and if it's allowed to rule and manage your reality, it, it destructs our reality. Because it, it takes more than its needs, it, it rapes our resources, it, it kills our species, and all the things negative. That's not done by high self, because the high self has evolved to a much higher level than that. But the the high self uh, indwelling soul is an experiential uh, thing. It comes in to bring a prompting of higher potentials into this reality and experience and experimenting with all those potential realities and even to the degree of bringing in uh, information in, in the form of scientific information and higher consciousness and things like that. And it's also the one that is aware of, of ascension of consciousness, and that's one of its primary purposes is to, to give us a, a field where we can experiment and play at making wrong choices or observing the wrong choices of others. So we do not have to make those wrong choices to learn from them. And even though it'll take something like television, it's, it's so rampantly expressing all the low self, uh, expressions possible out here. We as observers, when we begin to realize that we're in a growth process here and those wrong choices that might seem to be so attractive, uh, actually are holding us in the lateral third dimensional form and preventing us from ascending into higher, um, dimensional consciousness of the fourth dimension or the fifth or the sixth. And so when you throw that away, throw it aside, and make right choice in every moment of every reality, then we begin the steady ascension of, and progress. But that's still not what I want to talk about. <laughs> I'll get to it. <clears throat> but I had to set it up so you'll understand. I had an interesting experience, and this is not the first time I've experienced this this weekend, of encountering a low self that had transferred at the death of the host to a, a, a nearby relative that was carrying forward through the death process. And um, this happened to be a, a mother who called me because her, her daughter was going through some strange 
thing and she was losing weight and she'd lost her appetite she just lost her will to really compete or when I tuned into her I felt like she lost the will to live and so um, I worked with her daughter a while and I helped to process, process her she's only 14 years old but or 15 and I helped her to process and clear so but when I went into the daughter to read her as I moved down through beyond the heart center down into the low cell I felt a resistance there there was something pushing me back that didn't want me there and I knew instantly that it was a a, a low soul indweller that had moved into her from someone who had died and so uh, I didn't say anything to the girl about this because I didn't want to give her any horrors or anything but after I'd finished with the girl I talked to her mother and I said you know I found a, and I've got to explain how this works and I told her about how this setup is and I said the low self at death as death approaches in the body it fears death because all it knows is survival it doesn't know spirituality or afterlife or anything like that so it, it will move into a, a caretaker or a relative by preference because a relative uh, is kind of the same genetic frequencies and it's easy for them to slip into you. And then they continue living vicariously through a through new host and they let the body die. Well, the problem is they are supposed uh, spiritually to move into a morphogenic field like an afterlife heaven for low cells to wait for reincarnation further down the line. And um, when they don't do that, when they move into another a live host here, it really screws up the person's systems. Because here this, this low self is, is, is having two prompters in it, um, or the body has two low self prompters, prompting you to make wrong choices and do things. And, and it even has the capacity of bringing the diseases forward, the frequency of them, um, from the old host to the new one. This is a, one thing that I, I recognize in, in families who, who genetically have the predisposition to breast cancer, for example, in, in the women. Uh, inevitably, when I go in to do a, a breast cancer, what I do is first check that low cell to see if they have an indweller in there. And, and 90% of the time, there it'll be. And it'll be the mother or the grandmother that that followed the, the host down and, and stimulated the DNA in the, in the uh, live host to develop the cancer again. So this is, is a karmic thing. I call this family karma when that happens. So we go back and clear it out of the original holes, and then it clears all the way through the system. But anyway, I'm, I'm off again. <clears throat> Getting back to this this host transference, this this low self soul transference from 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 one person to another. Uh, I experienced that personally with my my father when he died. My uh, an older brother was with him at, at the time of death. And I was had been in Arkansas doing a, um, a, a workshop at the time, and when I got back home, uh, we, we had the funeral and everything. But when I talked to my brother on the phone for the next couple of months, he, he wouldn't sound right. There was something wrong with him. He indicated he was getting sicker and sicker and sicker, and he didn't know why. <laughs> Well, we went hunting that fall up at the old ranch to get reunited, and the brother had a heart attack right in the camper where we were staying, and it was not a good one. He was could have gone out, but I was right there, and I went right to work on him, and I, I healed that thing in him. And then the next morning, he went down and got checked, and the doctor said they they were seeing a more healthy heart in, in their lives. You know that uh, you know Don was in his early sixties. It was like the the heart of a teenager, the way it looked on the charts. So anyway, that aside, we did finish our hunting trip, and I came home, and for the next month, I started feeling weird. And, uh, started thinking about the old ranch and wanting to be back up there taking care of things again and, and, uh, all of that. And Jane happened to glance over at me one day and she went into shock and said, my God, you've got your dad in you. 
And the instant she said that, I realized what had happened. Dad had moved into Dawn, and then when I went in to heal Dawn, Dad figured that that host was dying, that body was dying, so it moved into me. And I had it. Well, it didn't take me very long to take Dad into his right and proper place and, and get him out of me, and I promptly got better and came back to my normal self. So I've had that personal experience, but uh, getting back to this this young woman, young girl that I worked with who had this low self, I, I, when I told her mother that she had a, a, a they explained to her how this works, and I asked her if if, if someone in the family had died, and uh, in the girl's presence, and, and she said no, but her her mother, which would be the girl's grandmother, had died 43 days before. And the mother was right with her, right by her side when she died. Well, of course, the, the grandmother transferred, the low soul transferred into the mother, and uh, then right on into the daughter, whom she loved very much. And, and, and so the daughter started experiencing these, these symptoms of, that the mother had, had been enduring before she died, which is not eating and withdrawal of energy and a lack of will to live and all of those things that, that was showing up in the daughter. So we, uh, mother and I, Collaborated. We went to the daughter. This was out the daughter knowing anything about this. And we picked mom and grandmother up and took her to the right and proper place. So the young girl will be fine again. But I got to thinking about this later and realized I wonder how many of these transfers go on again and again and again through families. And the reason I'm talking about this is you healers out there or caretakers or hospice workers, Anybody who is, is close to someone dying, keep yourself shielded. And uh, I had the experience today of working with a, a hospice worker, a caretaker of, of elderly people. And and uh, when I went in to read her, uh, without realizing that she had did work in this type of line of business, uh, I checked her for low cell, just like I always do before I go into them, and she did not have one. So, uh, as an object lesson to this lady and her her father, uh, I told them about low cells and that the the, the lady I was um, doing the clearing work on wanted to really be careful to keep herself shielded. And she confided to me that uh, she never allowed herself to open up or get too close to those people. She'd serve their needs, but she never opened up empathetically and uh, and uh, feel sorry for them. She could nurture them without empathetically opening up and, and and she intuitively and instinctively knew to do that. So I'm telling you, you healers out there, anyone who's involved with, with a dying person at any time or any place, even in an automobile accident, keep yourself protected. Keep yourself at, at, at a distance energetically. Don't open your heart center up to them. Because um, it it's, it's, uh, can just pass right along, not only through you, but right on into your family. And this is, is why there's a lot of weird things going on out there in people that the doctors can't do anything for. They don't understand why they get sick and what to do about it, so they throw medications at them until, uh, I guess, the indweller gets tired of indwelling and, and goes to its own proper place. <laughs> So that's the end of my dissertation on that, and why? Because this is basically a healing program. Uh, it leads us into all other realms of of life as we experience it on Earth here too. And it's it's it, you simply need to know about this stuff. And I don't see it written out there anywhere how to deal with with low cells. And uh, have you experienced any of that, JP? Well, it is a very, very interesting dissertation they just gave there, uh, Stephen, um, Frank. Oh, um, but uh, it's um, just showing you that, that there are there are levels of death, there are levels of letting go, there are levels levels of moving on. And, and uh, in, when I've found um, it's souls that that are deep in an emotion that are locked in some kind of emotion, that normally is what is the 
um, the thing that holds them down and stops them moving on to the rightful place. Mm-hmm. Yeah, many times it's, it's guilt, associations, uh, karma, keep them locked right in there. Uh, there's some, some really some weird things. And uh, this is a, a level of consciousness that people just aren't, aren't aware enough about. Uh, we need to really, hopefully, get some scientific interest in this, so that so that the people whose jobs are to study such things and report, well, how are they going to ever do it? Is the problem? Um, it's all frequency, I, though, Frank, isn't it? I mean, in the yeah, end, it, it's it's all hologram and it's all frequency. So, I'm sure if there's a bit of reality that is a bit kind of squished up and un unorganized that it can be reorganized with somebody witnessing it it's that's what we're here for is to witness the world into being well i understand they have equipment now that can uh, sense the soul when it departs so if we can get them to sense that low soul also perhaps they could open up and uh, energetically be able to to read the, the subtle feels <clears throat> that's what the, the scientists uh, uh, just working reading that's in our last uh, our last show was talking about is developing equipment sensitive enough to read the subtle energy fields and uh, and that's where we'd have to go to, to 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 read things of this nature any comments from yeah. the group I, I'd like a tricorder too <laughs> yeah Rich you deal with these soul passes all the time what's your experience as low soul I had one last night. I crossed over some Hawaiian souls, about 200 of them. They were in a soul group. And uh, it really depends on uh, the farther back you go in time, the more primitive they are in their consciousness. But there's, um, I had a, a, you know, I've been following them down into the Book of the Dead and uh, observing and asking questions so I could learn about what happens to the souls and, Last night I, 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 I boo booed. I, I was following this vortex and I got into the wrong rabbit hole. <laughs> I ended up below the heart chakra of earth mind <clears throat> into some dark area of beings that weren't very friendly. Mm-hmm. And I immediately excused myself <laughs> and got the hell out of there. Sorry, wrong neighborhood. <laughs> I had the wrong neighborhood. You're the wrong hood, man. <laughs> oh, yeah. When I was first learning how to move through the chakras and read these levels of consciousness, I blundered down in there, too. And I was caught. I was just fighting the demons, tooth and toenail, and, and uh, I was in my easy chair. And Jane was sitting near by me while this was going on. I was in deep meditation, and if it hadn't been for her coming in and also giving me the energy to pull out of there, I don't know what would have happened. Uh, it, it really gets weird, doesn't it? That's why I warn everybody not to go below the heart chakra level in that third dimensional reality, uh, that the chakra system that exists below your feet, the earth mind chakras. You can deal, work in the upper levels quite safely because that's the consciousness of earth mind and there are a lot of positive things there like, uh, positive nature, of course, or mostly negative polarity. But uh, things like the Earth Divas and, and things of that nature, and, and and there are beings that that's their level, especially too, is is in that uh, level of consciousness to to help out with things. And so when you learn to communicate with them, that you can get a lot of assistance there. In fact, in our shows that we do, where we're working with the Earth energies. Yeah. We get a lot of help from them, uh, just in intuitive knowing, by being able to, to uh, clairvoyantly or clairaudiently tune into them to what Earth Mind wants. That's how they communicate with us: is, is uh, telepathic communication. And it's not like they communicate with a language. Again, it's feeling that those subtle feelings that you can rise to your mind that extrapolate out into uh, uh, something that makes sense that you can deal with. Hey, Frank, i got to tell you the story about my father when he crossed, when he died, his love stole. 
he had a brain aneurysm, so he was in the hospital, unconscious, in kind of a coma, and I got a chance to say goodbye to his low soul, and brought my daughters into the hospital with me, and then my relatives, the um, deceased relatives, high souls, they came in, they were all in, it was, it was a whole room full of spirits in this place, I hope nobody from the outside was listening to what I was talking about, but anyway... After I got done crossing my father's soul over, and we kind of, I, I asked him, you know, what, what did you learn in this lifetime? And, you know, I said, you were really mean to me. You know, you treated me very harshly, and I was your caregiver for like two years, and blah, blah, blah. And he goes, well, I think I've learned not to be so stubborn now and be more loving. And I said, good lesson. <laughs> so, so I, 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 after that, I, I went over to his house. And he died. He passed away. And then the next day I went over to his house and I opened the front door up and there he was standing there. He goes, what are you doing in my house? Get out of my house. <laughs> <laughs> and I said, you're dead. He goes, I'm dead. And I said, oh, you got a, he had a split low soul. He had two low so you know, split soul. So I said, yeah, let me, and so I created Vortex and saying back to the Book of the Dead. And then after that, I could walk in and there wasn't anybody telling me what to, you know, to leave again. Mm -hmm. But it, uh, he had had, um, he had this, man, he was so mean that he changed the locks on the house three times so that I couldn't get in. So when he died, I had to have the fire department come and break the front door down to get him out. It was, it was quite an experience to work with him, but. I learned a lot from it. You know, you helped me through a lot of that. And um, But the low soul is, is quite different than the high souls. Boy, I'll tell you. Well, it, it just makes us realize how much more there is out there in those subtle energy realms that, that we just don't experience any, have any comprehension of. Um, what the, the Hindus and the, the foreign religions do and the people who study this stuff, the like the Tibetans and things, uh, they know this stuff, surely by now, and have passed it along, but we sure have not gotten into our American and English consciousness over here. Well, when, you, um, when you're when you with somebody and they're dying and so forth, and you know, we've been told to tell them to go to the light, wouldn't a high soul already know where to go? So in a sense, you're telling the low soul then to go to the light? Are you talking to me or Frank? Whoever wants well, to grab Frank's, it. Frank's obviously taking a call. So, um, Rich, you're, uh, you're the man. Well, okay. So um, normally, if a person is spiritually minded, they are, their high soul will cross over. Because they've already prepared themselves. The low soul is what usually gets stuck because it's the animalistic instinct, uh, consciousness. And that's the one that I cross over more than ever. So, uh, that's when you need help with when you're, when they're dying is say, okay, it's time for you to go. And, um, it, what I'm finding is that many of the low souls, they don't really necessarily see a light. They, I think it's more of a frequency vibrational thing they follow into earth mind because um, the high I create a vortex and send them down into the book of the dead but it's more of a sound it's a real low frequency vibration compared to the high you know the high souls so then would you tell them instead of following the light to follow the heartbeat per se the vibration well, of the heartbeat well, what I do is I, I bring up their, one of their relatives, their ancestors, through the vortex to, to greet them. Just like an angel would greet your high cell, your high soul. And, and I, I just bring in an ancestor, like the Hawaiians last night, I brought an ancestor in to greet them, so they weren't afraid. And I said, now follow your ancestor back to the book of the dead, and I create the vortex and they leave. And that takes all the fear out of them, you know, because they don't know what to expect. They don't know what... You would think that they had been taught about this stuff, but they hadn't. Even the kahunas here that taught um, the kahuna, they, many of them still didn't understand it. 
and they just didn't understand that we do have a low soul. They were taught about reincarnation, but they didn't understand the concept that the low soul goes into the Book of the Dead where it's reincarnated. A high soul doesn't, it goes in, it, it joins later with the body after it's, you know, when it's born. So, I, like Frank was saying, you know, the, the Eastern religions understand this, but they write it in such a context that I find it very difficult to follow because the terminology is so foreign to me. So, and that's, um, I, I did, I was on a, the phone working on a, on Skype working on a guy just before I came on and he was rattling off all this Indian terminology to me because he'd studied all this stuff. And I said, you know, I, you lost me, man, because I, I didn't study that stuff. And then, but when he started to explain to me, then I understood what he was saying. So, yeah, um, the education process of the low soul, over here in Hawaii, very few people understand it either. Mm -hmm. Well, that surprised me since uh, they generally had a better concept of things before the missionaries came and taught them the ways of God. Well, everything before the 1700s, uh, they practiced Huna, and they understood some of it. But once the Christian missionaries came in and they started believing that there was, you know, they were only going to go to heaven or hell, uh, they kind of uh, got lost on it. It's pretty interesting. Because I crossed, I crossed over a whole congregation of of, of the congregationalists. They were the, the low souls of the congregationalists. There was about a 100 of them. And they'd been here for... 250 years or so and they didn't know anything about Jesus they were low soul because the low soul doesn't ha- understand about spirituality unless the high soul is disciplined the low soul to communicate with each other they're pretty much kind of like an animal almost in their consciousness mm-hmm. I think that's what it is is that um, m- most of us have a hard time differentiating between the high soul and the low soul and that's where I think a lot of trip up begins well it's very difficult for anybody to understand it if they've been in any kind of religion because religion only doesn't even know how to define the soul to begin with and then everybody is, equates when they die they're going to go to heaven which they equate to be in the higher realms of consciousness well, now, yeah, but they're, they've been told that by someone who thinks they understand, the religious people who think they understand that everyone goes and sits at the right hand of God in paradise forever. Well, that's just simply not true. That's not how it works. What's your experience of the afterlife? Well, let's get into that. That ought to be fun. With me? Yeah. Okay, well, I just crossed a couple groups over this week, and I went into the higher realms with them. And the last group, um, they were Hawaiians. They had died from 1970 to 2012. There was about 2,000 souls. And I I got together with the, the – they always have a, somebody that spoke spokesman of the soul group. So I created a vortex, and I said, I'm going to go with you. I brought one of my angels with me to keep the portal open. And I went in there. And I walked into this huge area, and it was like, what happens was these souls, they, 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 it's a big soul group, and, and they all kind of divide into groups. And I was in a group of tens with ten souls. And they were dressed in white robes. It was kind of like a crystalline, it was, it was more of a, a translucent type of a, a building where you could, with grids in it. And then people would sit together and they would commune. They would experience, they would share their experiences about what they did on earth. And they would get through a group of ten and then they would rotate into another group. And it was kind of interesting because one person would come up and say, you remember the time that I did this and this with you? And I'd say, well, um, I was part of your soul group and I came here to, I came here to teach you a lesson about something and this is how you responded to me and blah, 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 blah. And it was like, they were just interacting, and they did that for a long period of time. I kind of, uh, I said, you know, I'm not going to, you guys don't have time up here, but I do. So I'm. And let's fast forward this sequence. So this um, 
guardian or angel I was with, he says, okay, let me show you what the end result is. And at the end result was uh, each soul was kind of like in front of a board of elders, so to speak, of about six people. And they said, okay, what do you want to do in your next life? This is how far you've evolved. It was kind of like, you're, it's your choice. What do you want to do? Where do you want to go? Do you want to stay in this soul group? You don't have to stay in this soul group. You can go somewhere else based upon your evolution. It's like we have we have the power, we have the freedom. Our souls are are the judge, jury, and executioner of what we want to do. So um, we we have a choice of what we want to do. And that's what really frees me up because I realize how much power we really have as souls, mm-hmm. and um, we we get to choose what we really want to do. We're not told by God what to do. We're part of God. And we, we, yes, we do use the prime creator's energy to exist, but we're also part of the whole and we have a say in what we do. And it's very, very interesting because the high souls, they go to a completely different a realm of, um, and what was really interesting is my father-in-law, he died about t- 10 years ago and he comes and visits me periodically and I wasn't able to reach him the last six months. I just couldn't find him. When I I go up into like the fifth dimension and I would sit up there and I'd ask to find him. So I went up into another higher dimension and there he was. His name was George. And I said, hey, George, where have you been? He says, I graduated. I'm in a higher dimension now. And I said, well, how'd you do that? He says, well, I helped all these souls and I've learned. I've evolved. And um, I've helped these souls trans- transition, and, and that's kind of how we do it. We learn and experience, and as we learn and experience, we evolve higher. And um, so it, this whole thing is quite fascinating to me, and I'm, I'm just now starting to get into following these soul groups back and trying to, to learn more and more about, um, and after, you know, what, what do we do if we decide we don't want to we don't want to come back to this third dimensional plane? And I'm I'm finding that there's more souls uh, uh, that don't want to come back. They're they're kind of tired of the rat race, and they kind of would like to just either move on to some other place or just stay up there in the higher realms and not have to be bothered with you know, mankind. <laughs> yeah, you can't blame them for that. Oh. My experience has been very similar to what you described there, except for that uh, one time I was researching um, the Vikings, for researching the book that I was writing, and um, in the course of following these Vikings, of course, some of them got killed, and I went into this altered state of consciousness, and and because um, I was curious about what happened to them, they all talk about Valhalla mm-hmm. and and how great Valhalla is going to be. So uh, I went with them and crossed over to observe Valhalla, and sure enough, there they were in a great hall, Valhalla, and they were fighting and raging and raping and doing all of the things that they love to do here on Earth. But it was a transition zone. Very soon, it's like they, they learned, well, okay, that was fun. Now we got that out of our blood, we can go on. And they went into a region like what you're talking about there that didn't have a thing to do with their history or anything, but it was a higher state of consciousness where they left behind their earth plane consciousness. So I got curious and wandered around a little bit and into other halfway houses, so to speak, and there was uh, dozens of them, like the Christians, that just know where they're going to go, these congregations like you're talking about. Sure enough, there they are, uh, working through their stuff, learning as well, maybe it's not all what it was what it was cracked up to be, and, and going on into higher levels of understanding. And uh, that was quite revealing to me, because it was... It, it says that we create our realities, and in our joint consciousness, we we can create communal, create communal heavens and experiences and things like that too, afterlife experiences, transition experiences. So it, it's just like you said, it's it's what do you want? What do you expect? 
it's all about learning. It's like, yeah, the Christian experience. So you go up there and you meet Jesus. And, you know, I, I channeled with Jesus for six months. I went through the whole New Testament with him. And I asked him, did you write this? Did you write that? He says, no, I never wrote that, but I wrote this. I said, what was the point of you being coming down to earth? He says, to teach unconditional love. Mm-hmm. You know, he was a, he was an ascended master. And yeah, so when those people get up to that state and they find Jesus and, they learn the whole message was about unconditional love, and then what are they going to do next? They're not going to sit there and go to church for the rest of their life. They're going to have to figure out something else to do with their soul, so they move on. Well, they have to go get ready to reincarnate again somewhere, and possibly another star system. Who knows? Well, I don't know. I haven't got that far yet. <laughs> <laughs> well, make sure you got a return ticket when you do. Well, I always ask. Uh, I got this. This angel named Gabriel, he's, I said, make sure you keep the door open, man. I just, <laughs> yeah. I'll have my wife called Frank and say, Rich is mumbling in the corner <laughs> for the last two weeks. Can you help him out? <laughs> <laughs> okay. Well, it's time for a break, JP. Yeah, then you know. have got some healing to do. I have. And here's the thing. A few weeks ago, a few months ago, I was musing as I do about, you know, I should write a song. Uh, and I thought, ah, oh, let's make a song about Hoponopono and, and I love you, I'm sorry, and please forgive me. And, you know, I started playing with something, with this little chord sequence, and, and then suddenly I realized it's already been done before. Tracy Chapman, <laughs> baby, can I hold you? Check this out. DP, are you back? Yeah, yeah, I've faded out the wrong fader, and uh, that's why you didn't hear me. I, I was just having a good uh, good old chat there. Anyway, yeah, that was Tracy Chapman with uh, Baby Can I Hold You. And as I said, you know, uh, a sort of Hope Pono's Pono song, kind of, uh, it's bringing the gist across. I mean, it still was like you. <laughs> you won't say sorry, you won't thank, you know, all that. But it does start the ball rolling. And uh, Yeah, well, I think you can do it much better in- I didn't hear one whole pono in that whole thing. Well, the, the the beginning, you know, it was all like, um, I, I'm sorry, I love you, forgive me, yeah, yeah, I, yeah. kind of thing. Anyway, but uh, that was a long time ago now, and we're uh, we're now we're in the 21st century, and we say it for ourselves, don't we, Frank? Mm-hmm. Well, okay, have we answered uh, any questions about the afterlife and? Low cells and transition to low cell souls and all that spooky stuff. Are there any I've, questions? I, I have uh, a thought uh, for those of us who could need to be reminded and for new listeners. Uh, when you talked about uh, souls moving into you uh, after when you're close to someone who's dying, and you said uh, we need to shield ourselves. Could you uh, help, um, again, remind us and share with new listeners how to do that? Excellent. Well, it's it, it, it quite simple, actually. Uh, you, you know, uh, the, the energetic opening you feel when, when you want to embrace somebody uh, or bring them into your confidence or give them love or... Pass unconditional love to them, thing like that, that opening sensation. And that happens when, with empathy and sympathy and sorrow, that all opens you up to be vulnerable to this stuff. And, uh, but just like this lady told me, the way she shielded herself was she simply just did not uh, energetically um, get into these, these folks' passage. She was became like the observer, and that's what I've told others too in the past: is, is be the observer. Don't energetically get caught up in the process, in the death process itself, because sometimes it's not very pretty, and you don't want that shock and trauma downloaded into your system to, to where uh, your own low self could get the idea of well, this is the right way to do passage, so let's do one prematurely just for fun. I'm kind of joking there, but but uh, the the main thing is to be that step back, impartial observer, serving, doing everything you could, but don't open up empathetically or 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 with your sympathy to them, particularly if it's someone you and it's hard to do with someone you love that's dying there, 
Of course it is. But uh, be aware of what could happen. Your awareness gives you power over these things. Because you can simply say, another thing you can do is, is simply, uh, as the person is going into their death stages, simply say, low self, you have no permission to come into my system. And just close your low self to them. It's just like just wrapping yourself in your whole, own energy field and r- repelling these things. So um, it's done with awareness that it, it can happen. It can be highly detrimental uh, if one of these things gets passed around through a family. It's got something like some uh, some disease that may trigger the genetic response in the person it goes into. And that's just one example of what can happen. They, uh, the people that I've seen them go into have experienced mood changes, personality changes. People who had never smoked before suddenly become smokers or alcoholics, things of that nature. So they can pass personality and character traits and addictions. Anything of the low self that they carry with them can pass on that way. And it, it's just scary as hell when you realize what can happen. So uh, just be aware, be cautious, protect yourself. You have the right and authority to conduct your own reality in your way of means of choice. You don't have to be subjected to anything out there in that outer consciousness, no matter what form it takes. Good enough? Well, um, I know that there was one time when I was... uh I was being a tourist on a, actually was in Las Vegas. I'd never been there. It wasn't my favorite place on the planet. And uh, I was with a friend who had studied to be a Huna. And she had, we were both standing together. And uh, I noticed this whoosh over her left shoulder. And it was like a, a ghostly dark figure. And she literally reached over and just, kind of whacked me on the chest and said, keep your heart closed. And uh, I, I went, you know, I was kind of shocked by it, but she saw what was happening. And then later on, as we're sort of wandering around, and I was somewhat childlike because of the bright lights and so on and uh, the curiosities, and uh, she kept reminding me to to close, to shut off the the heart chakra I was listening to a musician on the street and I was excited and and it and I opened up again and she kept reminding me to keep doing that because of that um and those souls that are are wandering there and uh you know like is there a metaphor that that you could use I mean stepping back I I I get that from an intellectual point of view but uh like or energetically for someone who doesn't understand what we're talking about in terms of um, subtle energies. Um, I had one description from a Qigong master, and she said to have visualize a warrior shield in front of you and imagine that it's spinning at all directions all around you mm-hmm. and, and constantly put it in place, lock it in place, let's say. Or you just mentioned like wrap energy around you, like a cocoon. Or mm-hmm. yeah. Um, well, I think the crucial fact there is is to remember that in the subtle energy system, what you create or visualize or imagine becomes a reality in that dimension, and so that's why you can create something like that. It has has functional quality to it because these things are in in that subtle energy field and trying to get back into this physical field. Jane did a study one time, uh, her and a girlfriend, and they, they went around to various places in town, and they were dowsing to see which would be the worst place or the place where it would be the most like to pick up entities and, and to receive possessive entities of any kind. And so what she discovered, the, the very worst place was in hospitals, because hospitals are where so many souls get released in their death trauma and whatnot, and uh, they're wandering around in the aisles, and some of them wander until they grab onto somebody else. Uh, the second thing that was was really uh, 
that warned, you had to warn, be warned of is bars. Because in bars, you go in and have a few drinks and you let down, open up, and they just slide right in. This is why uh, when I work as an alcoholic, the first thing I have to do is clean out a ton of entities and go back in time and seal his aura so that, because the entities are probably what's driving him to drink uh, or any addictive substance for that matter. And now the third most likely place to pick up entities was in a church, believe it or not. And uh, that makes sense because you go in there and let down, relax, open your your heart up to God and suck, you got it. <laughs> Particularly if there had been a nice funeral there the, the day before. So anyway, uh, you can protect yourself, and it's strongly advisable to do so. They are about, and they are like like anything in this physical life. They are to be acknowledged for what they are and understood and shielded from or given assistance to cross over. That's even the more important thing is to help them cross into the right and proper realm where they belong. That's what got Rich so involved in, in working with souls, is is it's a right and honorable thing that he does. And uh, we need a lot more people like him that are capable of doing this. Okay, any other questions? Yeah, I have another one. Uh, the Book of the Dead, when you say bring them to the Book of the Dead... What what is that book of the dead, and what does that mean? Well, in in the consciousness of thousands of years of people who, when someone dies, certain people take responsibility for caring for the bodies or the, or making sure they go to the spirit land or whatever, according to whatever their traditions are, and in that process. Um, Thousands of years ago, the Tibetans developed a process called the Book of the Dead to help the Buddhist people in that right and honorable transition and to clear them of all their their negativity so they could pass easily and freely. And that's kind of a set into their, their consciousness over there of the Buddhists. And I observed it in, in uh, Egypt uh, when we went into the tombs there. I, I observed the Having been there in past lives, apparently I observed the writings on the, the, the on the tomb walls that w- explained the process of, of what they went through as they were doing it, and I could understand that writing. I don't know how, but I did, and I fully downloaded that process for them takes seventy two days or longer. But the realization came to me that it can be done in just a matter of a, of a minute or less if you understand the process and how it works. And this is the process of, of clearing and doing the Book of the Dead. Because once you mention the Book of the Dead, this whole process opens up to you. Because it's already in, in the consciousness of our reality out here and being carried forward for thousands of years. When you say, I want to do the Book of the Dead for somebody, they're here. They just appear and uh, in the subtle energy field. And it, depending on what your orientation is, what you believe in or, or been programmed to be, it'll be angels or uh, other dimensional beings that assist the, the, the souls as they release from the body from the attachment to the earth plane and third dimensional consciousness they assist t- t- these people in the transition and it's a, it's a beautiful thing to witness and that sudden realization well I'm dead I realize I'm dead now or these angels wouldn't be appearing so I can go now many times I've observed that they can and do ask to stay around for a while if they have the realization because they want to comfort their their relatives and whatnot. So I never do it until they're ready. I always say in your own proper space and time, uh, simply put, point your attention toward the transition beings and they will be here to help you. And that will release those when they're ready to go. Uh, those that are locked in that aren't aware they're dead, like the, the low self beings and things like that, low self souls, and even some high self souls that get die of sudden traumatic sh- shock, 
they got shocked, get shocked into this physical reality and they don't realize they're dead. They're wandering around, uh, wondering why nobody can, will talk to them. And, uh, they can be very interesting. Some get locked into a, into a, a, a because of familiarity and, and energetic resonance, they get locked into a home or a, a place like that where that seems to support them because of, of, of the programming they have in Earth mind that sustains them. And gives them a sense of reality. And, but once you mention the book of the dead and, and offer to help them across, they take right off too. Uh, we had an experience just, uh, what in November or December, wasn't it, um, uh, Rich that you came to my house and I told you about a, somebody had kept coming in my bedroom door and talking to me and I couldn't understand what they said. And I hadn't really tried to take them over because I hadn't figured out what they were yet. And they would, they'd wake me up, but that didn't bother me that much. But, um, you worked with those and quickly realized that the reason I couldn't understand what they were saying is they were German and they had been the, the original homesteaders here in the house where I live in this area. And they were just wondering what, what I was doing in their, their home. And so Rich picked them up and took them on and I haven't had any experience since, Rich, and thank you for that. Yeah, there was also that other guy that showed up. He was a character. He had been a, there, you had two, you had another guy. He was, he'd come over to be a gold miner and he, um, somebody shot him and killed him. And he was, he was upset. He, First thing he started doing was cussing at me and swearing at me and all kinds of stuff. I had to calm him down and tell him to behave himself. And <laughs> that was quite an experience. But that's common, you know, when people die in this. Uh, especially when if somebody's killed like that. They're in a fight and killed. They're angry and, you know, all that kind of stuff. <clears throat> Without fail, every new house that Jane and I moved into... Uh, there would be a welcoming committee, people pounding on the walls, sound like from outside, or uh, things being knocked over, and cupboard doors slamming, doors slamming, things like that. And uh, every time I'd realize it, it's the neighborhood folder guys welcoming us, so I'd, I'd just pick them up and send them on their way, and, and we'd have no more problem with them. Well, shall we do some healing work? Any anyone volunteering to be healed? Well, if, Frank, uh, I started putting it in our uh, little chat room of ours. Uh, my son-in-law, Jason, um, has been going in for some tests. He's being tested for either uh, myalgia, myalgia. Uh, he might have lupus. Or, uh, neutra, uh, oh, my, my, fibromyalgia? My fibromyalgia, they're not quite sure. Mm-hmm. So, I was so like, it's about same poisoning. It, it, but they figure it's some type of autoimmune, and I haven't yeah. heard back from him. He's been gone this weekend. Okay. But I told him we'd do some for him. Well, let's see everyone shift our, our consciousness now. We're, we're all very focused on this. This, uh, the information that's been coming forth here. So now you need to shift out of your conscious reasoning frontal lobes, trying to take all this in and incorporate it. But I'd like to show you a quick technique of, of internalizing that information so you'll be able to use it the next time you actually have opportunity. Just close your eyes and just be aware of your frontal lobes of your brain. And it just feels like they're full of energy, and they are, because it's your frontal lobes trying to hold on to all the thought forms that it's processing through. Now, the way to take that from short-term memory of your in your frontal lobes, everything we talked about, is simply take your attention to it, wrap your awareness around it, it's just like reaching out and wrapping it up in a silk sheet or something and pull that energy you feel in your frontal lobes down 
to the base of your brain and just release it down the spine down into the hard disk it's just like saving on your computer that energy will just flow away out of your frontal lobes down to and it'll associate with what you already know and it'll be available for you when you need that information again all you have to do is think about rich your eye and what we said and that kind of ask for that information it'll rise right back up in your conscience how to do everything we told you about okay now notice your, your brain feel clear again so this is, if we hadn't cleared that that would have been a, an obstruction to stepping back into the healing mode so take your awareness into your forehead now and just move right straight back in your head moving back through the soul center back through the psychic center all the way back kind of behind your ears and you'll feel yourself expand that expansion is a clue that you're in the subconscious mind you'll notice that your frontal lobes that chatter is shut off and that's the way you want it now drop your awareness down the spine just kind of pulling and extending that point in the back of your head down the spine to the heart center and you'll see awareness that the heart center is where everything occurs now drop your awareness on down the spine to the root chakra and on down into the earth and anchor into the earth mind polarity there the female polarity and this is the connection you have to make to do good healing work because here you're stepping into the field of manifestation or demanifestation now bring your awareness back up to the heart center and bring up earth energy with you the female energy that holds the form of what you manifest in the standing ways now hold that there and reach up back up the spine out through the crown chakra to oversoul to the male polarity and pull that down through the top of your head because the male has the intent he has the form he has the picture of what needs to be done and the female supplies the basic earth mind earth energy to create that form pull it down to the heart center the zero point in the heart now you know you're ready to heal because you stepped into the healing mode Okay, let's look let's look at Jason now Susan's son-in-law and to do that you extend yourself out through earth mind the grid of earth mind consciousness to Jason Jason and Susan with her focus of consciousness she knows where he is so we go through Susan to Jason Now I do all of this with feeling, with clear sentience. And I'm asking for Jason, and Jason just appears. And we feel Jason's condition. He just feels weak and confused, disoriented. He can't focus. Can't get any energy up. Well, the first thing we're going to do is clear Jason of entities. If he has any, so I'll check yes he does and entities can give a person these exact symptoms so through the power of the crisis in us Jason we command your entities to go into the light release and go into the light now we're calling the helpers from the book of the dead to assist these entities to their own right and proper place and you feel him just release Jason's clearing up already and we close the entities close off 
Now, and entities will come in when people get sick and weak and their aura breaks too, and that may have been what happened to him. But they do love alcoholics and drug addicts. All right, now, back to Jason. I'm dowsing. I have my dowsing tool so I can ask questions. Does he have fibromyalgia? No. Does he have chronic fatigue? No. Does he have a mental condition that's exacerbated by his, what he's doing in life and his reality? Yes. Is this like a, a hopelessness, a helplessness of giving up because he can't fight the burdens any longer? And he wants to actually be in a condition where people nurse, and love, and take care of him. Now, this is the subconscious we're working with, not his conscious mind, but the subconscious is creating this situation, this appearance of illness within his system. So what we do is go to the people who know Jason and who nurture him, take care of him, and Susan. Now, people help us with this healing. We want you to open up a flow of unconditional love from your hearts to Jason. So he'll feel nurtured and empowered and healthy. And he'll find a point and he'll work through these problems that are, are got him off his path now and uh, feel a great emotional shock. And Jason can come back onto his path, find reason for living and experience what his soul came into to do in this lifetime. It's direct unconditional love energy to Jason now. It has the capacity to heal any real honest problems that Jason has in his system. So we do that also. And you feel the heat coming out through your hands. Just surround Jason with your hands. And he's all around through the power of the Christ within us. We see Jason in the perfect an honorable condition filled with self-worth and self-reliance and ready to take on the world again Jason you can do it <clears throat> Jason you can do it look into the light look into the future find your path and follow it All right now we wrap Jason in unconditional love and from his uh, relatives and near companions, let them support him until he's back on his feet and going again. Okay. Wow, Frank. Jason is he has he had a very troubled childhood. I was I'm the closest thing he has to a mother figure. I, I've taken care of him since he's been with my daughter for 14 years. On They got divorced a long time ago, but he kept me as a mother. Glenn and I have shown him, and actually my daughter has shown him more unconditional love than anybody in the whole family. Mm-hmm. He went over to Iraq. He came back with P- PTSD. And, you know, he's on, he's, you know, count, he's doing counseling now. And this is what he really, really needed. Frank. He's a wonder, he's, he's a, he's a very, he's a really nice person. He's just, he just doesn't know where he's going, which he really needed this. So thank you. You healed him mind and spirit and body. Yeah. That's Frank. what works. One more thing. Can you test for aspartame poisoning, please? Oh, okay. You can. Where's your dowsing tool? Well, I just want you to kind of reflect that. Yep. Is he kind of addicted to Cokes and soft drinks and things like that? His favorite drink is Mountain Dew. There we go. It's killing him. (laughs) It's killing him. He will get better if you stop. If he stops drinking that stuff, it will. He will get better. Very good, JP. Okay, thank you very much. And he always gets in. Tr- he cannot do the drinking. He always gets in trouble. Mm-hmm. 
<laughs> and he knows it. Instant <laughs> karma. Wow. Well, okay. Now we release Jason. Going down our list here. Uh, Teresa Palmer, healing request for Susan Hanna. Susan Hanna, London, Canada. She has entities. Well, we won't even go into that one. All right. Uh, Teresa, direct your attention to, to Susan and... Okay, there she is now. We ask her pendulum, does she have any possession? Yes, she does. All right. Through the power of the Christ within us, <clears throat> entities, we command you into the light. Release. Through the power of the Book of the Dead, go with the, the, the helpers. Go through the Torah, through the tunnel, to your own right and proper place. Okay, now this works well on exterior entities. Let's check for indwelling entities. No, those are a little tougher to deal with. <clears throat> but she doesn't have that. All right, this this would be the things that just in, influence her and make her feel bad, not be functional, uh, prompting her to make wrong choices and things of that nature. All right, now we're wrapping her <clears throat> in a shield of energy. It will bounce off any further energy intrusion until she gets her own personal power and focus. And, and Teresa, you can help her do that. Just, Teresa, just drop into her now and reach right up through her crown chakra. Pull in the light of Oversoul down through her system, centering herself in her personal power. Anchor, anchor that down into Earth mind, and she'll be fully functional again. Okay, <clears throat> here's one from Christine seven seven seven. Let's see if I can get this back up here. I would like a healing, Christine Hauser, age sixty eight. Tucson, Arizona. I'd like a healing on the bowel cancer. It is still growing and there's so much pain. Thank you. I was my son, I was my mom's caretaker for 15 months, but it was not, I was not with her when she passed. I did go see her body at the funeral, wondering her low self could be in me. All right. <clears throat> Check that first. No, it's not. You're, you're okay. All right. Christine Hauser, 68. Check to see if she's clear. Yeah, we can go into her. All right. Now, there's something I have to make you aware of, folks. <sighs> Sad as it is, I've discerned or come to the conclusion that cancer in most cases is an honorable way of committing suicide it's a way of and it may not be because of anything that's going on with her now it could have happened 20 years ago the shock or trauma to her system and so with Christine yeah I feel it now we go back in time and Christine's standing ways the power of the Christ is in us. We go back in time, and Christine, to that point of shock. And usually things of this nature have to do with relationships. That's all we need to say. So at that point in time, for Susan, for Christine, we... Back in time, she makes right choice and creates a reality parallel to the one where the cancer was implanted in her. And she comes forward in the standing ways without the cancer, clearing the ways all the way up to this present situation. And in the present moment, in the zero point, we take the energy away from the 
cancer that's sustaining it. <clears throat> we take <clears throat> the shock, the thought form that's a creating the will to release. We clear that. Now we send healing energy to her, wrap her in healing energy, the unconditional love frequencies, that know exactly how to neutralize that, the growth of that cancer, and we release the energy system supporting it. Cancers have a black aura around them, and to heal cancers, you have to clear that black aura away, and it's done with a, a burst of energy. I learned how to do this with Jane 25 years ago. We simply focus on the black aura because that's just what shields the cancer from the natural system that would otherwise take it out. Now we put a burst of energy into that cancer. <laughs> And blow it away. And instead we create the reality of health and vigor that we've created in the parallel reality. And that cancer does not exist. Okay, let's see if that should work for her. All right, close. Fifteen. Wait a minute. As long as we're on on Christine, I'd like to ask Rachel to hit that with a tone. To hit it with a tone that will blast that that black aura away permanently. Okay. Hi. Very good. I could feel that happening. Thank you. It was like a sonic sound, a sand blaster. Yes, it was. We ought to remember to do that. Not only that, but it ran off all the barking dogs in the neighborhood. That's a joke. Sorry about that. Okay. Healing request, Nancy Dyke. Is that how that's pronounced? Puerto Rico. Okay, this is from Teresa. If you know this lady, Teresa, pick her up so we can find her. All right, there she is. Eczema is an allergy. Where a person that is literally allergic to their own skins. We want to ask now to see the mentally emotional cause of this pattern into our system. See the power of the Christ is in us. We clear and release back in time when she did not. I see her as a teenage girl, about 12 or 13 kind of frail and thin she did not like herself she did not like her appearance and she was afraid she wasn't going to be accepted so we release that feeling that thought form and clear the predisposition to eczema from her body from her skin from her system the power of the crisis in us, we wrap her in an energy field that neutralizes and clears that reactive field that we, that she tried to shed 
release that now we see it now we wrap a cooling healing soothing energy it moisturizes and neutralizes see the power of the kites within us we see this Nancy Dyke in the pure and normal condition grab that energy field it's already starting to subside right now release that we have Janet Smith Atlanta Georgia severe arthritis stomach intestine ulcers maybe cancer all right I feel a real the instant we tuned into her I felt a real resistance in my throat almost like there's something she literally wants to throw up out of her system Mm. we want to clear now and release from Janet Smith the memory of that situation that caused her the arthritis which is simply a response to something that a situation that she can't move forward in that locks her into this uh, negative condition and her body responds with arthritis to the power of the crisis in us we released Janet from that time and space we go back in time and cleared that event or events it feels like the long term thing release her clear her up and clear up the st- stomach and intestine ulcers this is just simply re- rejecting those energies that are stored in her system clear the energies out we're creating a vortex now a, a, a green vortex whirling down from above her head down through her all the way into the ground just sucking this all the negativity and the mental emotional cause with it oh, great now I already feel her getting lighter thank you everyone that's good good visualization now we close to that ok healing for Stuart Noble Forez, Scotland heart arrhythmia angina having a heart stop and restart today in a few hours how old is he JP um, he's uh, oh, 57 alright oh, we drop into him into his system alright we see a pattern whoo uh, downloaded from his his parents and ancestors that uh, if you live to be 60 you cheated the, the reaper we want to release that from him now there's no reason why he can't live to be 100 let go of the family program to check out early and get out of the rat race release it we're clearing that heart of those blockages. Very good. All right. Now, Stuart, you've had your warning, so now take care of yourself. Exercise, eat right lose that weight find the reason for living it gives you joy and opportunity look forward alright now close <clears throat> ok I have one in Boise here this is Jasmine Muscle Jasmine is 14 and she has a a, a bad thrush 
or candida in her throat. In fact, it's, it's more severe than that. It's um, a bacterial invasion, and it's weakened her to the point where she it hurts to eat. And when they were trying to treat its antibiotics, it made it worse. And so what we have to do with this condition, and it's not one condition, it looks like about three conditions, she has a, a tremendously weakened immune system. Now that immune system sits right underneath the upper chest in the thymus gland area. And uh, when I tune into Jasmine, I feel a heavy pressure on her chest, like in response to emotional things that happened in the family. And it suppresses, it suppresses her immune system and is allowing this, this condition to manifest. So we clear, clear from Jasmine, Please clear and release the mental emotional cause. Lighten their thymus and immune system up, bring it back in balance. Now we go to the, the bacteria colonies that are in her throat. And also in her system. Now we go into the subtle energy system that feeds this bacteria its life force. And there's a group mind consciousness in these bacteria colonies that, where they support each other energetically. That's how they colonize and grow. And because they are, have a, a negative polarity, I'm, I'm putting a negative polarity field against them to neutralize their life force and their communication with each other. Feel this happening. See the power of the crisis in us. We see Jasmine's throat clearing up. I see it in four or five days. She should be totally cleared. We're strengthening her immune system. We're encouraging her family to help keep her clear of emotional strife by dealing with their own family issues. The power of the crisis in us. Now, I know you healers, your hands are getting intensely hot on this one. And that's it. Be- <coughs> I can hardly talk. It's like burning the life force out of those bacteria through her entire system. Jean has it down in her in her intestines. Take your energy down there and heal and clear. Release the life force of the bacteria colonies. With this feel this flow coming into her throat now, it's a emerald green color that's neutralizing that, that bacteria. Brilliant emerald green. Feel her chest getting enlightened and stimulated to heal. Create white blood corpuscles in her spleen. And we wrap her in a healing energy which we'll reinforce from time to time as we think about it. More importantly, we want this dear child to 
look at the reality of your family and know that everything's going to be okay. And so it is. Okay, we have Gabriel Regano, London, Canada, bowel cancer. Here again, we can do what we can, but it's his choice. Okay, go to Gabriel's high self. Do we have permission? Do we have permission for this healing? No. If Gabriel changes situation, yes. All right, Gabriel, we're communicating to your higher self now. Please prompt Gabriel to change his situation so that he can eliminate this bowel cancer and work with the doctors and surgeons to eliminate this totally from his system. We feel our communal hands around the bowels, supporting healing. Very good. Now release Gabriel. That's his choice, but we give him the energy to heal now. Should he choose to do so? Clear him of fear. <clears throat> okay, healing for Jack Lowe and Catalula in Maui has an ankle that will not heal and a broken foot. All right, tune in to Jack. It's his right ankle. All right, let's take Jack back in time to the accidents that broke his foot. And in the standing ways of time, Jack, make right choice to not put yourself in that situation that this can happen. And send that energy forward. And in this case, we see the foot healing very rapidly. Ankle healing. Wrapping it in that emerald green energy again, healing energy, clearing the inflammation, bringing back in the pure and perfect condition. Close. It said Dr. Jack Rich. You reinforce that whenever chance you get. <clears throat> All right. For Tammy, Eagle Horse, thyroid cancer. She's 15 and was born with it. We'll take Tammy back in her uterine into the situation that her mother was experiencing. To the power of the Christ within us, we see this child be formed in the perfect condition. No predisposition to thyroid problems, which is triggered by her mother.
in the power of the Kartathinas, we wrap Tammy in healing energy, bring her system back into balance, Andrican system, and any other conditions. Now we know we're getting a good healing on this because our hands are extremely hot. But she, she can clear up now and be fine. Now we have Diana Acuna, Long Beach, California. Left knee, fell three times and hurt knee. Okay, straighten that knee out, Deanna. Rachel, you it's the left knee. We're going to wrap a healing cast around that knee to heal the torn ligaments, the displaced bones, to the power of the crisis in us. We see this the in the perfect and normal condition. Now we rotate the energy field clockwise to create a cast around that knee so it'll stay in place. And she should heal very rapidly now. And all right, that seems to be all we have for the moment. I'd like to remind everyone out in the listening audience that these energies that pass through us come from the the galactic source, the galactic field, and they work directly in the subtle energy system that surrounds all of us. It's like a plasma of energy that when it's directed with intent, and God force consciousness, which we have we have the power to correct and heal any situation to all of you out there whose hands are hot and tingling now you know this flow is passing through you so direct it either to your own problems or to someone you want to heal and this this flow of energy is coming in has virtually unlimited capacity to heal anything any situation or for manifestation or demanifestation it's all directed by you by your desire and will and intent through the zero point well I heal a tremendous I feel a tremendous flow of energy coming through me now and all of us do we're healing a lot of people out there right now. Oh, that feels wonderful. All of us who are listening pour unconditional love into this flow and direct it to any condition of anyone listening or that you want to direct it to. Now feel the flow of unconditional love come through your heart. That that pure love, that joy of knowing and healing is our body signal that it's well done. And we'll see you all next Wednesday. <laughs>